Hi, I am Ryan Mark, and welcome to our video tutorial about Java programming. In this video, we will talk about lesson 3, which is the Java IDE. So let's get started. So, what does IDE means? An Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, is a software suite that consolidates basic tools required to write and test softwares. Developers use numerous tools throughout software code creation, building, and testing. Development tools often include text editors, code libraries, compilers, and test platforms. So kapag sinabi nating IDE, this is a software kung saan tayo pwedeng makapag-code ng more efficient kasi present na lahat ng mga tools na kailangan natin para makapagsulat at makapag-run tayo ng ating mga source code. Unlike dun sa naging demonstration natin ng lesson 2, kung saan gumamit tayo ng isang simpleng text editor para makapagsulat ng code at Windows command prompt para naman makompile at run natin yung ating Java source code. The previous process is very hassle, especially kapag nagsimula na tayong magsulat ng mga malalaking piece of software. With the use of IDE, mas magiging madali na yung proseso natin ng pagkukod at ng testing. So, why is it recommended to use IDEs? Here are some of the benefits. An IDE can improve the productivity of software developers thanks to fast setup and standardization across tools. Without an IDE, developers spend time deciding what tools to use for various tasks, configuring the tools and learning how to use them. Many or even all of the necessary dev test or development test tools are included in one integrated development environment. As I was saying a while ago, yung ginawa nating pagsisetup ng environment variables at pag-compile at run ng Java source code sa command prompt ay hindi na natin kailangan pang gawin once na nakapag-install na tayo ng IDE. Kasi sa IDE na tayo magko-code at magko-compile ng ating mga programs which is far more efficient. Popular Java Editors There are more sophisticated IDEs available in the market but for now, you can consider one of the following. The first one is NetBeans. It is a Java IDE that is open source and free. It can be downloaded from netbeans.org. The second one is Eclipse. It is also a Java IDE developed by Eclipse open source community and can be downloaded from eclipse.org. So in this tutorial, we will be using Eclipse instead. Sa pagpili ng IDE, it's actually a matter of preference, which in, in this case, I personally prefer Eclipse over NetBeans. Pero honestly, no one is better than the other because they serve the same purpose. Eclipse for Java Eclipse is an open source integrated development environment supported by IBM. Eclipse is popular for Java applications development uh, and Android apps development. It also supports C or C++, PHP, Python, Perl, and other web projects developments via extensible plugins. Eclipse is cross-platform and runs under Windows, Linux, and macOS. Download and install Eclipse. You can download the Eclipse by visiting this link. Select and download the package that matches your system, then you can install Eclipse to your system. In our case, we will just manually look for Eclipse using Google, so let's start. To download Eclipse, all we have to do is to open our browser and then search for Eclipse and then click the download link. So first, I'm going to go to Google and then I'm going to type Eclipse and then press enter and then as you can see here is the eclipse.org and you just have to click this one or that one uh, now as you can see 
uh, there's a button where a download link is available. So we're just going to select this and you're going to download the Eclipse. So next is you just have to match uh, the installer based on the platform that you're using. In my case, I'm using Windows and I'll go into download the 64-bit 64 64-bit 64 version and then hit download. So after clicking download, there's a save button hover over here. You just have to hit this save and we'll just have to wait for the download to finish. Same with the uh, JDK a while ago. I already pre-downloaded uh, the Eclipse. So what we have to do is to double click to install this. We just have to double click the Eclipse installer. Once this window is loaded, we will going to select the proper IDE that we'll, we will going to use. In our case, we will going to install Eclipse IDE for Java developers. So just have to click this one and then leave the, uh, the default path to this one and this one. So your option is to create a entry on the start menu and also to create a desktop shortcut. So typically, iniiwan ko lang uh, as it is yung mga yan. So you just have to click install and uh, accept the terms and agreements and as always, waiting game. Okay. So, looks like the Eclipse installer is done. So, we will just going to click launch. Okay, the Eclipse ID is now loading. Okay, so once na natapos ng mag-install yung Eclipse, lilitaw itong dialog box na to, giving you the option kung saan mo balak isave yung yung workspace. So, if hindi mo gusto mag-save yun sa drive, so you just have to click browse and then uh, you look for a path to sa kung saan mo siya gustong mag-save. Pero for the meantime, I will go into leave it as this one. And then I'll go into click launch. And again, we just have to wait for Eclipse to fully load. So Eclipse is already loaded. So ganito yung GUI ng Eclipse. Ito yung itsura niya. So, uh, hindi naman siya ganong kahirap gamitin. So, upon loading, you just have to click Workbench para makapagsimula na tayong makapag-demo. So, kagaya nung Lesson 2, susubukan din natin magsulat ng isang basic na Java program lang para matest lang natin if okay yung ginawa nating Eclipse. So, to do that, we can create, create a Java project over here or you can go to File and then New and then Java project, kahit alin sa mga yan, parehas lang yan. And then, uh, you will going to be given the chance to put the project name, for example. We're just going to put demo Java. And then, uh, hit finish. So, ganun lang. And then, so, pansin nyo, medyo mabagal siya ng konti. Kasi, naka-sandbox lang ako. So, once na nakagawa tayo ng uh, pag natapos tayo dun sa mga lesson natin, to yung mismo actual device na yung gagamitin natin. So, again, we create a class. And then, papangalanan natin tong my first Java program. Same to sa kahapon. Then, you have an option uh, to include this main method. So, public static void main string arg. So, if you check this, automatically the, the Eclipse will generate the main method para sa inyo. Pero ako, during classroom discussion sa mga sudyante ko, I discourage na i-check yan. Uh, bakit? Kasi uh, gusto ko ma-memorize nila ng paulit-ulit kung, pa kung paano sinusulat yung main method. Para kahit hindi sila naka-Eclipse, kahit simple text editor lang, kaya pa rin nila makapagsulat ng buong structure ng isang Java program. So, just have to hit finish. And then, in here, we're just going to put the main method so public, static, void, main, and then open and close parentheses. And then inside, we're just going to put string and then 
50 arcs. Okay. Next, we're just going to access the system class. So system that out that print and then we're just going to print hello world. Tinda nung ahapon. Okay, so we're done writing our Java program. So I just deleted yung module kanin dito kasi nagko conflict siya. So to run this, just have to click run and then click run or control F11 if I'm not mistaken. And then you just have to click OK and then the output will be printed out in this console window. That's it. It's very easy. Unlike the sa ginawa natin ng lesson 2, dito walang hassle. Bubuksan mo lang yung Eclipse. You will going to start writing your code over here and then you can click run here or you can press this one and then automatically Eclipse will do the compilation and interpretation para sa iyo. So, I hope you learned something sa lesson nating ito. And that's the end of lesson 3. If you love this video, kindly drop a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.